first thing you want to do when applying body filler is to clean your panels. A lot of people overlook this step where they just blow it off with, a, with an air gun. Use a wax and grease remover and prep that panel. Make sure it's really clean so that the body filler has something clean to stick to. So the process at this point gets pretty repetitive. You know, smear the filler, sand it off, smear it, sand it off. And every once in a while, Nathan would use a DA sander to rough in, you know, the real rough spots. But the majority of the work is done with a block sander because that's what it takes to get them super, super straight. Uh, you have a good feel for the sandpaper and the block. You have a feel for the panel. You're not over sanding. We like to call it creeping up on it. You just work it down a little at a time, a little at a time, until eventually your panel is smooth. You'll notice on this car that the Quantum One body filler application is pretty spotty. Um, sometimes in the past, we have skim coated the entire car, you know, from front to back, and sanded the whole thing off by hand. And this helps make the cars really, really straight, but it also takes a lot of time and a lot of material. Because of some newer technology, we don't have to do the skim process from front to back. We can do spot areas with the body filler and then prep the car again to spray a layer of body filler out of the spray gun. And this product is from Evercoat also, and it's called their Super Build 4 to 1 Polyester Sprayable Filler. It's a pretty neat product. Again, you'll notice that there are some sand throughs on this Camaro's body where you see bare steel, and then you see this very, very thin layer of body filler in certain spots. And we've moved the car into the paint booth and masked it all off and mixed up the uh, catalyzed 4 to 1 Super Build Primer. And then Nathan sprays the whole car with the sprayable. And the process here is that the sprayable polyester comes out of a gun, which means you didn't mix it like uh, the filler, so you don't have any pinholes in your final application. The pinholes can come from mixing body filler and whipping air bubbles into it, and then you effectively spread the air bubbles on the car, and they reveal themselves when you sand it by using the sprayable polyester, it lays on without any air bubbles in the mix, so you have a nice solid substrate. Another advantage of the sprayable polyester is it brings that 500 hour salt spray corrosion resistance to the whole car. So it covers those sand through areas, it's designed to go direct to metal, and it also provides yet another layer of corrosion resistance. And after the sprayable polyester is allowed to cure, uh, you'll see that there's some zebra stripes in it. Nathan sprayed some black guide coat aerosol so that when he starts block sanding the polyester, he knows where he has sanded and you know where the high spots are and where the low spots are because they uh, reveal themselves with the guide coat. A technique we use is to tape the body lines of the car and then block sand to the line. And this makes sure that when the car is finished, all the body lines are nice and crisp and straight. Uh, if you just take a, a sanding block and do it by hand, chances are that body line is going to wobble a little bit. It's not going to be arrow straight. But if you use regular old-fashioned masking tape and mask out the lines and sand right to them, uh, you'll make sure that they're nice and straight and crisp. If you're gathering that there's a lot of sanding that goes into one of these cars, you're right. Uh, the good thing about the sprayable polyester is that it sands pretty easy. The body filler takes some work. The polyester is a little bit easier to do. So each step gets a little bit easier and, and takes less work, but they're all very necessary. And once the car is completely blocked smooth in all of the areas with the sprayable polyester, uh, the car gets another coat of primer and then it gets a coat of sealer before we can start spraying the color. And on this car, the color combination is kind of unique. It's actually going to be three different colors and they're all late model factory colors. The bottom part is going to be a maroon uh, metallic from Chevrolet. The top part is going to be a black pearl and there's going to be a stripe and silver to divide them. So Nathan's approach was remove the body panels, spray the color on the door jams and in the trunk jams and, and all the hidden areas, put the car back together. So Nathan built the color scheme on this Camaro from the bottom up. He sprayed the red on the bottom half of the car. And he actually sprayed it farther than it needed to go and then he covered that with a silver break point stripe, and then he shot the black over the top. When all the colors were laid out, Nathan buried this car in many layers of clear, 
because he didn't want to have any texture coming through. He was going to get wet sanded and buffed, and he wanted to make sure that uh, you couldn't feel the stripe when you, you know, ran your hand over the polished car. And the color scheme's kind of interesting. When we were first spraying it out, it's exactly what the owner wanted, and we were thinking, well, this might be kind of interesting, and we were pleasantly surprised because this maroon, silver, and black go together really nicely, and he's going to have a car that doesn't have uh, the same paint scheme as all the rest of the Camaros next to it when he goes to the car show. The final steps of the paint process are the wet sanding and buffing. And again, more sanding equals a flatter, straighter, uh, more glossy and reflective car. And Nathan spent a bunch of time using the 3M Trizac system to wet sand this car with multiple grits all the way up to 3,000 grit sand and then started to apply the polishing compound with a wool pad and then a foam pad. But you can see the results. I mean, this car, it's a mirror. It's very hard to photograph indoors because what you're looking at is a reflection of the wall. You know, it's hard to see the car. And it's hard to believe, looking back at what we started with, uh, that this would end up being a partially black car because, you know, black shows every little flaw and imperfection in the metalwork. We've illustrated that if you take your time and put the effort in to make sure the panels fit together in bare steel, you use a quality filler product that doesn't shrink and is easy to sand, and use the polyester product which fills all those little sanding scratches and pinholes and take your time and sand and sand and sand that you can get a flat mirror finish uh, starting with anything you want. You can start with the biggest pile of junk and end up with a, a complete show car. It just takes time and some dedication and some attention to detail. But we think this one came out pretty nice.